you and I both know that big tech is advancing all the time. And as they continue to do so, you as the professional will continue to lose influence and value that you bring to your clients if you submit to their game. The alternative to that is remembering the fact that you have a very unique competitive advantage, which is the fact that you are human and you have the ability to deep with you have the ability to connect with people on a very deep and emotional level and then serve them in such a way that that AI cannot. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about that, how you can make deep client connections with others. Today's guest is he's the, the best at this particular topic at really going beyond just the iceberg of building relationships and, and going deeper. So you're going to love this episode. Stay with us. Question is this, how do those of us in the real estate industry with crazy amounts of ambition, how do we think bigger than the building of our own empires? How do we simultaneously seek success and significance, income and impact? My name is Justin Stoddard, and this is the Think Bigger Real Estate Show. All right, welcome back everybody, where our promise and commitment to you is to help you to think bigger, to expand your possibilities. Today's guest is gonna help us do that today. Carl Becker, so excited to have you here today. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, absolutely, I love it. Can't wait to talk about all this stuff today. Please do tell us your story. Your background is is one that is is noteworthy and that um, ought to create some context as to why we've chosen you to talk about this topic. Yeah, I appreciate that. So without going too deep, I'm I'm one of those lifelong doers. I'm a get your hands dirty type of guy. Even when I was a little kid in school, I learned by doing, getting in front of the class, interacting with people, bringing ideas. I've kind of been that person that's that always gets inspired by something. And then I like to share that. And what I found in later life is when you do that, that's called selling. Um, but for me, it's really all about the human connection. I love connecting with others. I love being of service and I love helping other kind of salespeople, entrepreneurs, anyone that's out talking to other humans, crack that code, figure out how to have deeper relationships, how to bring those relationships into business and how to use those relationships to create win-win. So, you know, you're helping your client you're also helping yourself and in sales you kind of have unlimited potential and that's why I like it so much. So that's, that's my short, short version. I've always been in the game of running businesses and selling and bringing ideas forward. I love it. I think um, this audience is, is much like you in the sense that uh, we are on the front lines. Uh, we recognize that any good idea is, is not um, it's not a good idea unless someone is out there promoting it. Like you have to have people behind you that, that are, that are promoting those good ideas and uh, many of this audience has, are, are in the business of promoting their own services and professional services, real estate, lending, wealth management, uh, et cetera. So that, that group is, is very much attuned to the fact that they have to be selling themselves and their unique approach to the marketplace, what they can uniquely offer to clients. Uh, so this, this topic of, uh, of going uh, deeper with people, building deeper connections is one that I um, that's, that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a guy who is very, very relational. Um, I also have fallen into the trap of believing that automation is a shortcut when in actuality it takes longer. When you start to separate yourself from the people that you are serving, it only creates a longer path, not a faster path. And so, um, this today's topic, what, what we're really going to drive and, and drill down into is how to build deeper connections with people. Um, and I know you just authored a book on this, Iceberg Selling. Can you give us a quick kind of synopsis? I'm sure this ties in quite well. I can't wait to get my hands on it, but I'm sure it ties in quite well to today's topic. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to give you the, the 100 mile an hour, 10,000 foot view. We're going to go fast. So the first thing I would say is if you're in sales, you might be sitting there right now frustrated. You might be like, if I don't close this deal or there's something like that where you're, you're almost giving your power to this event. You know, and, and I guess I would say what I'm about to share with you will hopefully allow you to relax into what you really are doing and why you got in this game in the first place. The outcome of doing what I'm talking about, of, of showing up uh, with intention and with focus and being of service is you have an amazing career. So right now, if you're kind of feeling stressed, how am I going to hit my sales goals or you just have a deal you want to close? I'm going to tell you, relax for the next 20 or 30 minutes. Don't worry about that. Think about how you can start to get deeper with people. And the whole idea with iceberg selling is 
all of us show up only showing about 10% of what's going on in our lives, that top of the iceberg. If you think about the movie Titanic, you know, they hit an iceberg because they couldn't see what was below the surface. And I don't want you to hit icebergs. I want you to like look at the 10% and then get curious about the 90% under the water and start to go, hey, if I could learn about that, if I could spend my time there um, and get that client, get my friend, get my partner, whoever it is to reveal more and more and more, guess what? I can see more. And if I see more, as salespeople, we're all problem solvers. We want to solve other people's problems. We want to build relationships. We want to build rapport. We want to be of service. At the, at the, I really believe that deep down. So if that's resonating with you, this whole book, this whole concept is how do I start to see more and more below the surface so that I can connect more, I can be more successful. Um, so that's really the high level of iceberg selling. There's some mindsets in there and some best practices, but the takeaway is if we can spend more time seeing underneath the surface, we can be more successful for everybody. So what does that look like, Carl? Again, we live in a world where we have kind of inch level depth on everybody through social media, right? We, we have know. this yeah, kind we of do. This, this purview, this kind of highlight reel that everybody wants us to see. Yet below that, we don't, we don't understand um, a bunch more stuff. What, what have you found to be some of the best strategies, even tactics for going deeper with people? Yeah. The first one is before any meeting, before any interaction, even with a current client, maybe you got a referral from that client or they're going to buy another house. They're going to do something else different. And they've reached out to you again. They're going to become a repeat customer. You know, take a moment and to realize things have probably changed. Just like as us as adults, right? When we're around our parents, sometimes they still treat us like we're 16, even though we're adults now, right? So there's needs to be kind of this belief in resetting, understanding where somebody is right now. And one of the best tips I would say is do the research ahead of time. What are the clues that you can find? Maybe they're in a new job. Maybe they move somewhere. Maybe there's something that's changed in their life. You know, what are the obvious things? And then from there, make sure that when you talk to them, you can show up in a place where you're vulnerable. You can show curiosity, but you can also share back some of what's going on in your life. You know, if this is that client you're reconnecting with, instead of jumping right into the deal of how we can, how can I help you today? You know, take a minute, be present, try to understand where they are, share what might be showing up, what's going on in your life. And when you do that, when we start to share, to me, it's like a ping pong ball, a ping pong match. So every time we have a rally where it goes across that net back and forth, we're building trust, we're reconnecting as humans, we're taking what we're hearing and we're sharing back. And that's when relationship happens and, and trust. And if you want to be successful in sales, you have to have trust and trust isn't given, it's earned. And so in my opinion, like the more you can get curious, the more you can spend time, the more you can share a little bit about yourself too, that's naturally going to happen. And that becomes the foundation of any good relationship forward, even mm -hmm. a selling relationship. You know, that's interesting you say that because you're right. In order for people to open up to you, you oftentimes have to open up to them, right? It's kind of like Absolutely. you've got you've to give a little bit before people feel like you're a safe place to be able to share other things. You know, I'm, I'm reflecting, uh, Carl, on an experience I had just this past week. Uh, one of my coaching clients, it's a, it's a small group coaching client, I coach a sales team. And um, one of the members of the, of the team reached out to let me know that one of the other members had just lost her son. And I didn't know that, right? I mean, I... You know, complete tragedy, and my heart goes out to her. We've been in contact since then, but I think sometimes we step into these conversations with people who are even friends or clients of ours, unknowing what's happening in their world, right? And um, of course, I kind of knew some background on the on the situation, but um, you know, heaven forbid, I you know would have reached out completely blindly and been excited and enthusiastic to talk about you know the growth of her business when that was the like the last thing on her mind at that time. And so I do think that you know, to the benefit of social media, there are some things out there, some tools that we can do. To, to, to research what's happening in people's world. Oftentimes I find that people are unwilling to make a call to somebody because they don't know what they're gonna talk about, right? And oftentimes this, this is peop, people who are, uh, who are very relational and they don't wanna have, they don't wanna call because it feels like a sales call. And I don't wanna be selling to my friends is what they tell me, right? Well, it's, it's, it's only selling if you're calling to get something, right? If you're calling right. to get something and not actually exchange value. And the way that I've had to position it for myself and for others is that if you can actually have some knowledge about what's happening in their world and call to give, to give thanks, to give appreciation, to give, um, you know, potentially, um, to, you know, to offer solace during difficult times to, you know, to give um, insight around things that you're seeing that they're involved in. All of a sudden you're not getting, you're not coming to take, you're coming to give. And all of a sudden relationship based people like myself are like, well, I can do that. I love doing that. That makes me feel good. That's aligned with my DNA, right? So this concept that you're teaching us about 
kind of getting below just the tip of the iceberg and really getting familiar with people, I think actually opens up the consistency of making the contacts for people because now all of a sudden it feels very genuine. It feels like they're calling to give as opposed to calling to get. Would you Have you seen that as well as that unlocking some things for people when they really start to embrace the principles that you teach? Yes, absolutely. You know, one of the quick tests, I'm going to cover two things here. One of the quick tests is I want you, if you're a sales manager, I want you to think about the salespeople you, you, you manage or coach. And if you're a salesperson, I want you to think about this. The next time somebody asks you about your funnel and, and the next deal, I, what, 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 what's, what's going to be your answer? And my guess is a lot of times you're like, you know, I think there's an 80% chance I'm going to close it. We might need to give them a discount. They're looking at this other competitor. And I've got to tell you that that's like table sticks. Yes. Yes. It's important to know that, but I would rather you ask yourself, what do I know about this person's world? Like if I were to go through your funnel and look at the, 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 the five deals you have on deck, and instead of saying, do you think you're going to close this? I said, tell me about their world. And if you're, if you're like, I'm not sure I know what that means. I'm not sure I know how to answer it. Then my invitation to you is get really good about getting curious and learning about the people you're working with because they are people. Even if it, even if they work at a Fortune 1000 company, you are still doing business with a person. And so get their world. The second part, which really dovetails lovely into what you're saying, is I think we all need to get great at brainstorming. And what I mean by brainstorming is like think of the people you're working with and then get kind of that brainstorm hat on. What could I give them? What could I show up with? What could I offer them that would make their world better? And yes, it could be the thing that I'm selling, but it could be a conference. It could be a blog. It could be an introduction. It could be something that helps their kid. Maybe that you saw on social media, their kids selling candy bars to pay for a hockey camp. And you're like, hey, I'm going to take 20 and I'm going to give them to my clients. But whatever it is, I want you to get really good at brainstorming ways to create more value, to create more connection, to show up with somebody that authentically cares about this other person because you know their world, you can start to bring really unique things. And when you do that, your life changes, your lifetime value, your customers go up, you're excited to call someone instead of like, hey, I'm calling to check in. It's, hey, I have this crazy idea. Can I share it with you? Of course, they're going to say yes. People love ideas. So I'm right there with you, Justin. And Carl, you said something really interesting there is that prior to making a call, right? You said this before, but you just expounded upon it. At least I, I had the aha of just take a little bit of time before each meeting and and don't just research, but also brainstorm. Like right. what, how might I be able to bring value to this person? And, and all too often, we don't even think about that, right? We don't even, and how long did that take? Maybe five minutes, right? Maybe, yeah. Yeah. but but to, to just jot down some ideas of like, you know, I wonder like this might be valuable. This might be valuable. Imagine stepping into a meeting with somebody and not only are they curiously asking questions about things that are happening in your world because they've been following you and, and are up to date on you, but also they say, hey, I've been thinking about you and some some things that might be of value to you. Have you ever thought about this? Or what are your thoughts on it? Like, you'd be absolutely blown away. And I think sometimes we marvel at how some people kind of scale through the ranks of life so quickly. And I think if we were really to examine people who really accelerate their careers and their businesses is that they're just really intentional about what you just said there, of being deeply concerned about them, the human, and deeply concerned about how they help their business grow and coming to the table with ideas instead of just coming to chit chat or sharing a kind of a one size fits all, right? Everybody gets this idea. It's really brainstorming in a customized way as to what might help them. Like that's really an aha for me. I appreciate you sharing that. Cool. Yeah, I, I think so in the, in the book, there's four mindsets. And the first two that I cover, I'm going to kind of squish together is lifetime value and being of service. And I'll tell you a really quick story that kind of drives this home. I'm running a sales meeting with people in the live event industry. These are the guys that produce the events, camera lights, things like that. And uh, usually in a sales meeting, I go around and we process an issue. We process your funnel, like what what stuck as a team. So the team's learning. This one guy, Ethan, is talking all about this meeting planner that he met. It's going to be a great relationship. We're going to do tons of events. But he's sweating the current of current RFP in front of him. He answered it. He sent it. She's not responding. And he's doing all the things that every salesperson does. You know, like, well, how do I get her to respond? Do I send her a text? Do I send her an email? Do I call her? Do I left her voicemail? Is it about price? Like he's already negotiating against himself, even though he's building these stories in mind. He doesn't know the real answer. So I calmed him down. I said, look, I need to ask you a question. What are you playing for? Lifetime value? All the events you can do with this meeting planner or this one? He's like, boy, that's simple. This one I was like, cool. So let's change our, our mindset from, I got to close this thing 
to how can I brainstorm? How can I start to become really good at brainstorming to create more value? I said that to him. I was like, what could you do? And he's like, well, there's a new venue in town. I could ask if she's ever seen it and I could walk the venue with her. I was like, great. What else? Well, you know, we've got some events coming up with some other clients that are fundraisers. Maybe I could take her. I'm like, great. You're, you're getting it. Right. And so to me, all of this is about changing how we see the world of sales from a transaction to this thing that if I close, I'm going to get more money or whatever I'm going to win to, wow, if I can work together and create value, then this becomes a relationship over time. Yeah. And some of my best friends were customers, you know, and, and if we look back, I'm like, remember, I sold you that thing. And we kind of laugh. Oh my God, it's been 20 years or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, I think you're really onto this around, you know, getting people to think differently and take an extra minute, not just show up with the thing that we're trying to sell, but that whole human, that whole world, getting their world. You know, um, you are so much in alignment um, or we're so much in alignment with each other. Um, as, as many know, this show is, is sponsored and brought to you by Pro Insight, the company that I get the good fortune of leading. And our, our whole emphasis are the principles that, you know, that I authored in, in my book, which are most people think about success in business of having a bigger and bigger and bigger database, right? The more people you know, the more opportunities will come out the other side. And I teach, you know, the principle of, sure, that I won't argue that that doesn't work, but also you ought to have a very small database of key partners. And from that key, those key professionals, the, the, those key players will come a large amount of referrals. So instead of big database, small amount of referrals, it's really small, intimate database. And from that will come some of your biggest opportunities. And I, again, that doesn't happen by just trying to automate yourself to more and more and more and more people, right? Sure, there's value in automation for staying in contact and the follow-up and the sequencing of that. But what's most valuable, right? What's most valuable is finding the people who can really be of most benefit to each other. And like you're saying, go deep with those people, right? Don't keep it shallow. Go deep. Find out what and 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 really find ways you can really move the needle for them. And I think that's so it's so contrary to what the way most people think. They think that to compete with big tech, they've got to be big tech, right? They've got to, they've got to automate more. And I think that just negates the unique advantage that we have of being uniquely human. I will add to that. And I, this is one of the most, one of my most favorite things that I tell people, especially consultants or people that want to start their business or they want to do something like that. Um, but the, the gist of it is this, if I have a network of people I trust and I've worked with and we have share common core values and my client could be a good client for them and vice versa. Like if we have that, the, the, the place of value is so rich because here's here's the kind of reveal. If I went to any of my clients today and I said, hey, before we wrap up our meeting, can you give me another 15 minutes? They go, sure. And I go, just for kicks, what are three or five other things that you're challenged with in your business right now? Just off the top of your head. And most likely they're going to tell me two or three things that are giving them a ton of heartburn. And then most likely I probably know somebody in my network that could help them. And so now we're in this situation of kind of this advanced brainstorm, this advanced value creation where I could be like, hey, Dave, that I get it. That sounds really frustrating. I was talking to one of my friends two weeks ago that does that that very thing. Would it be all right if I made an introduction or if we went to lunch or would you just be open to talking with him? Because I really think he could help you out. Most likely he's going to say yes. And what that does is he sees me more and more as that advisor, more and more as that friend, that trusted partner, that person that's got his back as does the person that I'm referring. And if we just think about how that works, if other people are showing up the same way you are in your network, you're right. Like all it takes is a handful of people and our magnitude, our multiplier effect is tremendous. And here's the best part. You're not selling. You're not salesy. You're not convincing. You're not blasting emails. You're not disrupting someone's day. You're having honest to God, high value, I care about you conversations. And then you're bringing solutions that you feel confident about. So I am, I'm a network machine. I love all of this stuff you're talking about. It's amazing. It's uh, it, it is interesting. If you look back at your life, how many people have actually gone deep with you, right? I, I would say that you could probably count them on one hand, people who really spent the time to do the things that you just described to us, Carl. And it's, it's few and far between really that yes. take that kind of interest. And so if you're sitting here and you're saying, how do I really accelerate my career? How do I really accelerate my business? It's not about going wider and, 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 and staying shallow, right? It's really, it, 
doesn't take that much to stand out in a marketplace where there's surface level conversations and value being offered everywhere. But you go deep with people, with the right people, right? You can't go deep with everybody. You got to go deep with the right people and your world can change really quickly, like really quickly. Absolutely. Um, you know, one example that I think of this is that uh, my now business partner in Pro Insight, who hired me to be the CEO of the company, he and I went to lunch and I just was thinking about his business model. And I circled back and I said, hey, Don, I have an idea that might be of value to you. And I just had put a little bit of thought into this. I thought he was a super fascinating guy. I loved his idea that he was building, which was a national digital platform of professionals from other industries across who are all going to be learning and, and, you know, learning the same thing and referring each other. And I just had one simple idea and he circled back after that and, and was super appreciative. And I think the, the conversation, the in-depth conversation we had together, together with me, just thinking about him after the meeting was over to saying, how can I help him? How can mm -hmm. I help that possible is what, and I, and I wasn't doing it for any other reason than I just was curious. And I love the idea. Like I wasn't actually trying to reverse engineer my way into being the CEO of Pro Insight, but that's what ended up happening. Right. And so I, I would just encourage anybody that's listening out there, if you want bigger opportunities, find the right people in whose world you want to be in and go to work trying to solve some of their problems. In fact, our chief growth officer, if interesting enough, Carl, we were doing a presentation to about a hundred people when we were first doing our beta launch. And there was one professional who said, Hey, can we get together afterwards? I want to share some thoughts and feedback on what I experienced. And we're like, hmm, that's pretty cool. She gave incredible feedback. And because she continued to just offer insight, she proved herself to be now the chief growth officer of the company. So it's, again, I, as I think back about what you're teaching me here, I'm realizing that my opportunities and the opportunities that I'm opening for other people come down to applying <laughs> these principles that you're teaching, which is go deep with people. Okay. Quit, quit focusing on the tip of the iceberg, but go deeper. Yeah. It's, it's so true. I mean, one, we don't know what possibility is out there. We just don't. And two, chance really does favor the prepared. So why wouldn't you want to be more effective with your time, have a stronger relationship with the people that you're working with, be able to kind of pitch fun brainstorms with the idea that if I do this and I do it with intent and with authenticity, there's going to be some possibilities I've never heard of, like you becoming the CEO of this company, this other person becoming the growth officer. You know, if we rewound their day 30 days before that moment, they weren't going, I hope I have this job. They were like, I'm going to put myself in a place where I'm always curious. I'm going to learn about people and I'm going to show up in solution and trying to be of service to others. And when I do really cool things are going to happen. And even if they don't, just the act of doing it's going to create satisfaction because I'm, I'm using my brain, I'm using my heart and making things happen. But but I'm telling you that you don't know what's going to happen. Amazing things are going to happen. The craziest things in the world that you just would never imagine if you start to really understand who people are and their situations and you stay in that place of constant discovery and learning and brainstorming, creating ideas, creating possibilities. And I love it. It seems um, it seems so obvious, but it's not right in a world that we're not taught. It's we're taught to be efficient with people. I think it was the late Stephen R. Covey that taught you can be efficient with things, but don't be efficient with people. And, um, and, and I've learned that lesson myself when I am, when I try to be efficient with people, I, it ends up happening. It backfires, right? Is that I end up replacing those people or they leave or it, or, or, or we don't actually get any progress, but it's when we can really be effective with people, which oftentimes means connecting with them at a deeper level, creating these deep connections. Um, Carl, obviously we're speaking, um, mostly to, I would say, the real estate industry, although I do have a growing audience in the professional services industry because of my involvement with ProInsight, are there some tactics and strategies that, that, that you teach, kind of taking it back to kind of, you know, um, kind of boots on the ground, brass tacks, um, that might help people to implement these concepts that we're sharing? What have you seen as you've tutored and mentored and coached people on how to do this? Some things that maybe stand out to you, I think, or two that that would be interesting for people to start to implement today, to start to make this more of their regular practice. Anything come to mind? Yeah, it does. Um, a story or an example I like to give in the real estate space is, I think most of us in that space already care about people and they know it's a ton of relationships, right? We know there's lifetime value. We know we might help them sell and buy and sell and buy their house and their kid's house and their family's house if I do this right. But I think oftentimes we sit here going, well, how does that even begin? You know, uh, uh, how do I how do I sell this house? How do I find my next customer? And I think it's by walking the talk. 
And so I guess I would encourage you to go, okay, am I walking the talk of service? Am I walking the talk of building deep relationships? Am I walking the talk of understanding? And when I do that, am I actually getting into action about it? Because it's not only sharing ideas. Sometimes it's asking for help too. If you build a really strong network and people know that you're giving all the time, you can, you can sometimes say, hey, I need some help too. Would you be able to help me? And so there's kind of this, this two pieces of that coin I put out. And the story I would like to tell just really briefly is I want you to imagine a family with some high school kids come to your neighborhood. You've been given the referral and you're going to show them a house. And as you start to walk them around, you see that these two high school boys are pretty frustrated. They're short. They're not listening. There's some weird energy between them and their parents. They clearly don't want to move. And you ask an iceberg question. Hey, what are your boys like to do? And, and, you know, do you think they're going to be able to do it here? And they say they love to play golf. And we've been traveling two weeks and they haven't been played it at all. And they are really competitive and they're freaking them out. Well, right there, your job is not about signing the house. Your job is how do you get those two boys to play some golf while they're visiting your town? So just think about that, right? Do you have clubs? Do you have a club you like to go to? Is there a public course? Can you rent them some clubs and they hit some golf balls while you're talking to the parents, right? But, but there's clues everywhere. So my, my number one thing I would tell you is try to get really present, understand someone's world in that moment and let go of the thing that you're really trying to do in this case, selling a house. It's not about that. It's about I'm in the job of connecting with people, solving their problems, making their life easier. And if I start to do that, really great things happen. So that's what I would tell you is kind of one of those tips, get really good about getting curious and just starting to throw out some ideas um, that provide more value than the thing that you're really there to do. Man, Carl, such great insight. I love that. That can be applied again in so many different avenues of just listening for those unspoken cues and, you know, being curious about them and then being a problem solver. I think uh, where, where professionals will get in trouble moving forward is their inability to really connect with people, you know? And I think those that will, will have a, a career that will thrive leveraging AI mm -hmm. and, and, and rising above it at a level that AI cannot replace is where you connect with people at that level, where you read the cues and you, you identify what they even haven't identified in myself. I remember as a kid, my mom was sometimes I'd walk in the house and she'd say, what's wrong? I'm like, nothing's wrong. She's like, no, something's, something's the matter. All of a sudden I would stop and I'd be like, oh yeah, <laughs> so I, I, I am kind of upset. And I'm like, what did happen? Oh yeah, I had an, an you know an interaction with a friend that was pretty unpleasant. And like, she could see it on me. You know, I think that's probably in part like the gift of a mother. But apply that in your life of like just reading your clients' lives and minds and faces, and and you know, be curious to say how can I help make this person's life better. And I think in there is not only a bunch of great business secrets, but it's, it's secret to a great life, right? Of really being somebody that has a whole bunch of people show up to their funeral, right? Saying like this person was always really present. They were always there. They were always solving problems. Like it's just a great life. So I love it. I have a, I'll leave you with this. I had a really cool experience. I was doing a workshop for about 20 salespeople all in like a heavy um, like industry, like construction industry. So you kind of have a lot of these like pretty burly macho, like tough dudes in the room. And I'm walking them through iceberg selling and we're talking about the mindsets and how to run a meeting. And a lot of things we're talking about here, how to connect. And at the end, I asked everyone to check out, hey, what did you, what are you taking today? And, you know, I'm getting really good answers. And then all of a sudden, this totally burly dude stands up and he looks at me and he's like, Carl. And I'm like, oh, boy, you know, what's happening? He goes, Carl, I got to tell you, all the stuff we talked about today, I can apply that to my life. If I do that, my relationships with my wife's going to be better, with my kids, with the guys I manage, with my customers. Thank you. This means a ton. And it was like, whoa, you know, here we were talking about sales. And this guy is taking the, the same thing you just said, like really trying to understand someone's world, understanding the, the strategies and tactics to do that and encouraging us as human beings to not be shy, to be a guide and bring ideas forward. And when we do that, we start to solve problems. We start to connect and, and, it, and it really resonated with him. So to me, sales is about connecting with people, making a difference. And you can apply all these things we're talking about to the relationship with your teenage kids, with your with your spouse, with your parents, with whoever. Um, it's powerful stuff. Yeah, boy, that's amazing. I, I can absolutely see that um, 
being true in my own relationships as well as I'm sure all the listeners that are here today. Carl, I've got one more question for you as we wrap up here, um, which is you are a big thinker, right? You're somebody who's who's uh, not only created success, but now you're you're creating success through other people. What is it that that Carl Becker does to continue to be a big thinker, to continue to expand your possibilities? What does that look like for you? Yeah. Um, I, I appreciate it because there's certainly the the table stakes of learning, listening to podcasts, mm -hmm. reading. But for me, it's about um, trying to understand the elephants that are in the room uh, with people that I talk to that are my clients and being brave enough to say, hey, is there something else going on here? What is it? And just being quiet and letting people share back. Because what I'm really working on right now is how do I get better at understanding? How can I get better at learning from others? And I, I want to find the other things that are in their life that I might not know that there might, they might not be sharing just kind of uh, acts, you know, like intentionally, like I got to dig. So I'm kind of in the journey of, of digging and learning and learning from others and doing things like that from a, from a pragmatic though, to give you the simple answer. One of the things that I've done is uh, twice a year, my entire family, we choose a book, we read it and we discuss it together. And it's just kind of a way to connect as a family and also to share knowledge and learning and kind of how we're going to apply it. So to me, it's real world. Like I started, I like to get my hands dirty. I like to learn by the environment, but from kind of a more traditional, um, we've kind of created a family book club where we meet twice a month and we, we talk about books we've listened to or read to just try to up level us and connect more as a family. What a great idea. What a great, with the people that matter the most in life, right? That you're actually applying these principles with, with them. It's fantastic. Carl, it's been such a pleasure to have you on the show today. I want to thank you for what you've contributed to everybody listening here today. You probably want to get your hands on a copy of Iceberg Selling. Um, you can do that by going to icebergselling.com. Um, Carl will then guide you through the process from that site as to how you get a copy of the book and stay in touch with him because uh, it sounds like uh, you're a guy that's very much resonates with this audience, somebody who is a big thinker and wants to do so by really going deeper with people. And I appreciate that very much. So thank you again for, for coming on the show today. Thank you. And I invite any of you to reach out on LinkedIn or through that website. Um, I answer every email that I get. If you have a question or something you're curious about, uh, reach out. I'm always happy to share. And thanks again. This has been a, a really great use of my time and a great podcast. I've really enjoyed it. Love it, Carl. Same here. And for everybody listening here today, my final request are these three simple words, and they are go think bigger. Thanks again for helping us do that today, Carl. Awesome. Thank you value in anything that you heard here today, do me a favor and just take a quick screenshot of this episode, tag me in it on social media. That will give you the heads up to create more content like this in future episodes. Also, if you are wanting to build your wealth advisory team in less than 30 days, that gives you two to four professional referrals every month, go to proinsight.com 